the greatest gifts we have is the ability to choose. And there are times when the choices we make not only drastically affect our lives, but also those around us, as Jody Woods of Mountain Center, California, discovered on the evening of September 30th, 1990. A lot of people die from drinking and driving, more than statistics know. I've seen newlywed couples die. I've seen whole families die in one automobile accident and all off alcohol. Just gotta wonder when it's gonna stop. About 100 yards down the road, park maintenance supervisor Randy Higgins and his brother Scott had just returned home. The we the impact. Then we just threw on our shoes and grabbed a flashlight, ran out the door. Their neighbor, park ranger Ed Salas, also heard the crash. You guys hear that? Yeah. Sounded like sounded bad. Bad. yeah. We went running up the hill towards the sound of the impact. And when we hit the crest of the hill, we could see the truck. And as we approached the truck, it jumped into flames. Eddie went up to get a, a fire extinguisher and with my brother Scott to call 911. When I approached the truck and looked through the driver's side door, I saw her laying between the bench seat and the dash. There was a surge of fear in me that I wouldn't be able to get to her. At 11.54 p.m., Scott's call came into 2350. Riverside County rescue units were immediately dispatched. When I grabbed the back door and it opened, I was afraid the flames were going to flash the whole cab of the truck. Once I got her out of the truck, pulled her down the highway about 30 or 40 feet. I reached down to feel if she was breathing, and I could feel her breathing at that point. She started talking about her son, and when I was afraid that he might still be in the truck. Went back to take a look, but by that time, there was no going back into the truck. Campers staying in the park began to gather at the scene. Oh, Randy was trying to comfort Jody and assess her injuries when Ed returned with the fire extinguisher. By the time I got back up there, the whole truck was engulfed in flames. Randy! Randy! Randy, Over here, Randy. She's alive. It was apparent that she was burnt real bad. Both her legs had signs of severe burns, and her ankle was obviously broken. So my thought was to just... Uh, keep her from moving around until the paramedic showed up. I'm Eddie. She was calling out for her son Eddie, and I thought maybe that the child was with her in the accident. So uh, I turned around again and ran up the road looking for a child or other vehicles involved. I need people who have flashlights. Any of you have flashlights? Come with me. The rest of you, please stay back. Jody's son was later found to be safe at home with his father. Paramedic Brian Moore was among the first to arrive. We arrived on the scene to find a large pickup truck that was laying against a rock with flames exceeding 15 feet high and uh, one patient laying on the ground. Okay, it's done here. Get here, Brian. Okay. Tony, get that fire. I was extremely surprised to see that she was even still alive once I saw the flames and uh, 
the debris that surrounded the accident. The gas tanks were rupturing. You could see gas coming out of the vehicle, and the flames were licking at the power lines that were above us. My initial concern was to move her out of the way of the gasoline and out of the power lines as fast as possible. All right, let's get out of here, man. We could smell the alcohol on her breath, and she said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I've made a big mistake. Once the paramedics drove away with her, there was that relief, that she was on her way to the hospital and being cared for by professionals, but there was still not knowing if she was going to make it. She had a large amount of burns throughout her body, also complaining of a lot of pain in her abdomen and having a repetitive questioning that was uh, uh, similar to somebody who's having a head injury. Our nearest burn center being two and a half hours away, air transport was the only logical alternative. Riverside County, Hemet Medic 53. I need a helicopter dispatch to Lake Hemet. I need a patient transported to a burn center. Plans were made for the Riverside Medical Air Transport Chopper to meet the ambulance at a nearby parking lot. The victim's mother, Marilyn Sabin, was also called. The phone call came in. My friend Jill, who her husband's a volunteer fireman, she said Marilyn and Jody has been hurt in an accident. And uh, being that it was, you know, an airbag situation, I really thought the worst. I ran over to the ambulance, and when I looked in the back window, she was in there. So I pounded on it and told him I was her mother, could I please come in? He told me I would have to be very calm if I wanted to come in with her. Take a deep breath, because she needs your support. Okay, I'm fine. Just take your time coming in. Watch your head coming in. Jody! I saw her face, and she was extremely pale. I could see her legs sticking out, that it was broken. Her head was bleeding, and she just started crying and telling me she was sorry. I'm so sorry, you know, and she would say, please just hold me, hold me, touch me somewhere, you know. And she was really scared herself that she was not going to make it. It's just horrifying. I kept thinking, don't let her hurt too bad until we can get her somewhere to help her. There was no room on the helicopter for Jody's mother, so she could only watch helplessly as her daughter was taken away. She had such a waxy, pacey look to her. I just you know that she was going to die, and I didn't want to not tell her that I loved her before, you know, if anything should happen. At the hospital, Jody was treated for second and third degree burns and underwent surgery to repair her fractured leg. After seven weeks, she was allowed to go home to her three-year-old son and her husband, Darren. I can't, I can't really imagine life without her. She's, she's my wife. She's very special to me. We're a very close family. Jody is an excellent mother. She's taught me patience and kindness with Eddie that I've never known. The drinking and driving are the hardest thing for me to deal with. Um, I feel selfish for doing that. I, I feel awful about that. I feel that I, I really took a chance of hurting so many people. I'm so glad that people like Randy are around. Jody and her family got to thank Randy personally. I just couldn't believe that he would be willing to get in this vehicle that was on fire and to bring her out. Fantastic. I was the first one there. You know, you walk up to a, a situation where somebody needs your help and they can't help themselves. I had to do it. <laughs> I think Randy is responsible for saving my life. I think I'm responsible for almost losing my life. I got a second chance. I get to try again, and that's pretty fortunate. We went through some problems, and uh, she's back to her old self now. 
She's plenty glad to be alive, and I'm very, very glad to have her here.